Welcome dear students, my name is Vikram Nalavde. I am working in Mechanical Engineering Department at Sharad Institute of Technology, College of Engineering, Yadra, Uttar Kandri. We will cover the content of Unit Number 4, that is Joining Processes. Today we will discuss some contents of same chapter, Arc Welding Processes for non consumable Electrodes weld join, quality and testing, weldability and testing. So let's start our lecture from arc welding processes for non-consumable electrodes. This type of welding is typically uses tungsten electrode. So this is the workpiece to be welded here and this is the welding gun. This welding gun has a provision of providing tungsten electrode that is non consumable along with that a passage of gas is also provided. Now this gas is nothing but this is the inert gas and it comes from the supply from this part. The cylinder is provided for the supply of the inert gas. Now here one point of the electrode is connected with the terminal of welding power source and second terminal of the power source is connected with the workpiece that is to be welded. During welding process, the distance between electrode and workpiece is maintained. Shielding gas which protects the weld zone from the environmental factors. Power supply is in the range of 8 to 20 kW and it may be up to 200 amperes in the case of direct current and up to 500 amperes in the case of alternating current. As one pole of the arc and electrode generates the heat required for welding, a shielding gas is supplied from an external source. This welding may also be done without filler material such as in welding closed fit joints. Composition of the filler metals should be same as of metals to be welded. Flux is not used in the uh, gas tungsten arc welding process. Shielding gas is uh, usually organ and uh, helium gas or its mixture. Because tungsten electrode is not consumed in this operation, constant and stable arc cap is maintained at constant level of the current. Gas tungsten arc welding applications generally these are used for aluminium, magnesium, titanium and refractory materials especially suitable for the thinner metals. Now here we will discuss about the advantages. It is uh, providing too much stronger joint and is uh, more ductile. It provides a weld with higher quality and a very good surface finish. Uh, air shielding gas is transparent, so there will not be any problem in visibility by the uh, worker or the supervisor which is handling this process. No flux is used, so wide varieties, and uh, it also provides a concentrated heating of the workpiece. Now we will discuss about the limitation. The cost is high because of uh, its uh, uses of inert gases, coolants and uh, pumps used for supplying coolants. Generally the thickness, maximum thickness that can be welded is uh, 5 mm and uh, for higher thickness then filler rod is used. Now even though uh, tungsten is uh, not melted at high temperature, but the problem is the atoms of tungsten can get diffused 
from the tip and enter into the weld pool that may increase the brittleness as already we have discussed in uh, applications these are used in offshore industries uh, combined uh, heat and power plants and petrochemical food industry chemical industry and nuclear industry uh, vast applications of uh, such type of welding process now next we will discuss about the weld joint quality and testing generally uh, when we are performing such tests then three zones are identified in a typical weld joint uh, that is base metal which is to be melted uh, which is to be welded and then heat affected zone it is the zone uh, where heat is affecting the properties microstructures and the surface properties of the metal and weld metal is a zone where welding is carried out uh, generally a uh, joint produced without a filler material is uh, called autogenous and uh, central zone is called weld metal and it is composed of mixture of base metal and uh, filler metal if we talk about the solidification process of the weld metal it is similar like uh, if we compare it with the uh, uh, normal uh, solidification process in the casting so it is similar like that solidification of the casting process and uh, the beginning with the formation of columnar grains take place uh, in this uh, slide we can uh, describe or it will be clear about the heat affected zone this is the weld area which is the joint uh, between two materials the red area it is the heat affected zone the material of heat affected zone is same as the parent metal but uh, it has a microstructure different from that of the base metal prior to welding because it has been temporarily subjected to elevated temperature during welding so there will be the difference in the mechanical properties there will be change in microstructures during the welding process because there is a huge temperature difference so very much care has to be taken here now the properties and uh, microstructures of heat affected zone depends upon the rate of heat input and cooling heating and cooling is the important factor through which uh, uh, internal microstructures and properties can get changed and uh, the temperature to which this zone was reached this is also very important factor when we are considering the zone of heat affection now let us uh, discuss about the uh, weld quality in which we will uh, describe we will discuss some of the discontinuities which take place during the welding process now here uh, weld discontinuity can be occurred due to thermal cycling microstructural changes in adequate and careless application of the established welding technique or substandard operator training so quality is totally dependent upon the temperature microstructural changes and the use of that welding process so let us discuss about uh, the major discontinuity first is the porosity as uh, it is clear from the picture that two metals are to be joined and this is the weld area now over the weld area you may observe some of the bigger pores so these are in the term of the porosity this is one of the discontinuity or the defect which affects the mechanical property of the material now generally uh, it is caused due to the uh, entrapped gases now we have discussed the solidification takes place during the solidification gases may get entrapped then uh, it may uh, it may be developed due to chemical reactions 
and uh, also due to the foreign particles or the contaminants present uh, inside the well zone. Now, some of the practices are followed to reduce or prevent the porosity. Then uh, it is a proper selection of the electrodes and filler materials. Then uh, improved welding techniques such as uh, we have to preheat the weld area properly or uh, we can increase the rate of heat input that also uh, is very effective uh, to avoid the porosity so that proper solidification can take place and uh, proper cleaning and prevention of the contaminants from entering the well zone that we have discussed that the contaminants present inside the well zone may be in the form of the defect that can be controlled by cleaning and uh, next question uh, is uh, reducing welding speed to allow time for gas to escape this is also very important factor through which uh, porosity can be avoided second type of discontinuity is the slag inclusion now inclusion uh, we can uh, uh, consider in the form of the unwanted particles remain inside the weld area now uh, it is the uh, compounds of oxides fluxes and the electrode coating material that are trapped in the weld zone so uh, if shielding gases are not effective during welding contamination from the environment also may contribute to such inclusion so uh, proper in proper way uh, shielding uh, gases should be used uh, that avoid the uh, contact of uh, well zone from the environmental sector so uh, some of the practices to avoid uh, flag inclusions uh, we follow that uh, first is uh, clean the weld bed surface by means of wire brush this is very effective and the normal way of cleaning the weld zone uh, or we can use uh, cheaper before the next layer is deposited then uh, providing sufficient uh, shielding gas that we discussed this is very important factor and then uh, redesigning the joint a design should be very proper because if design is good then we can achieve very good joint of welding then uh, next is incomplete uh, fusion and penetration so as uh, this diagram is representing the weld zone here uh, due to improper fusion some of the areas are left blank that may be in the term of the incomplete fusion so it occurs when the depth of uh, well zone is uh, insufficient penetration can be improved by some of the practices that uh, we have to increase the heat input then uh, reducing the speed of the travel of the welding torch during the welding then again the uh, same uh, uh, point we would discuss again and again that uh, we have to design or modify the design properly then ensuring the ensuring that uh, the surface to be joined fit each other properly so uh, better weld can be obtained by use of the following practices raising the temperature cleaning the weld area modifying the joint design providing sufficient shielding gas so it plays very important role next type uh, of uh, discontinuity we can consider from the weld profile so weld profile is uh, generally uh, here we can consider this is a good profile in which uh, weld zone is completely filled the joint uh, can be considered which is having good strength so this is the good example of uh, good weld here so some of the uh, uh, discontinuities in the form of underfilling here we will consider this is the area of underfilling
so here uh, under filling uh, it results when the uh, joint is not filled completely uh, or uh, improper amount of uh, metal is supplied on the joint zone now next uh, is uh, undercutting that uh, is uh, represented by this portion this is the undercut and that is uh, uh, it is uh, in the results that from uh, melting away of the base metal and the consequent generation of a glue in the uh, shape of a sharp recess or notch so improper amount of fusion uh, which takes place and some of the empty spaces which remain that in the form of the undercuts so uh, next uh, type of uh, defect in weld profile that is the overlap so this is the surface discontinuity uh, which is caused by poor welding practice or by selection of improper materials and as we have discussed earlier that uh, this is the example of the good uh, weld this is the profile so uh, now here next type of uh, discontinuity we will discuss uh, about cracks so uh, the cracks are present uh, in the uh, weld area or nearby the weld area in the parent metal itself so it may be in the form of a longitudinal transverse crater under bed or toy crack so uh, these uh, cracks generally result from a combination of some of the factors that temperature gradient that uh, cause the thermal stresses in the weld zone so due to the thermal stresses developed uh, uh, here internal cracks can be generated or developed then uh, variation in the chemical composition of the weld zone that also cause uh, uh, contraction during the cooling due to which the formation of cracks take place then uh, due to embrittlement of the grain boundaries so uh, presence of uh, sulfur to the grain boundaries and occurring when the solid liquid uh, boundary moves when weld metal begins to solidify so uh, due to sulfur presence the crack formation is severe and here hydrogen embrittlement uh, due to the presence of hydrogen gas uh, in the weld zone so uh, next is the uh, inability of uh, weld metal to contract during cooling so uh, generally it is related with the hot tears that develop in castings so it is also related to excessive restraint of the workpiece during the welding operation so these are some of the factors due to which the formation of cracks take place so the prevention uh, measures uh, can be taken again uh, joint uh, design uh, has to be modified to uh, minimize the stresses and uh, some of the parameters should be uh, considered and changed procedures and sequence of the operation for doing welding then uh, preheating uh, of the components uh, should be considered and uh, avoid rapid cooling this rapid uh, cooling uh, increases the internal stresses due to which the cause it is cause the formation of the cracks then uh, next is uh, lamellar uh, tears what are the lamellar tears these are the uh, areas where workpiece becomes weaker when it is tested in its thickness direction because the alignment of uh, non metallic uh, properties and uh, some of the inclusions these are called stringers so uh, the workpiece becomes weaker uh, due to the lamellar tears so uh, these tears can be avoided by uh, modifying the uh, design of the joint uh, uh, to make the weld bed penetrate the weaker component more deeply then uh, surface damage as in this diagram uh, around the uh, weld zone here so small dots are present here 
so these are the uh, spotters or we can say during the uneven type of welding process or continuous contact of the electrode uh, to the surfaces near the uh, zone of the welding so these are uh, developed on the surface due to which the surface uh, damage take place so uh, these are also called uh, these counters are called arc strikes so these are the arc strike marks so that surface discontinuity is produced uh, these are obje objectionable for the reasons of appearance and if for severe this discontinuity adversely may affect the properties uh, of the welded structure particularly for not sensitive metal uh, now next factor uh, the type of discontinuity uh, we will consider in terms of the residual stresses uh, the stresses uh, may increase uh, the problem in the application of the welded component because the localized uh, heating and cooling during the welding the expansion and contraction takes place which causes residual stresses in the workpiece so uh, these stresses uh, can create uh, some of the defects like uh, distortion warping and buckling of the welded parts then uh, stress corrosion cracking uh, can take place then uh, next further distortion uh, it if it takes place then the portion of the welded uh, structure is subsequently removed if distortion takes place such as by machining or sawing and then uh, important uh, uh, drawback of the defect uh, that fatigue life is uh, reduced of the uh, weld structure it may be one of the factor then uh, how stresses can be relieved generally problems like distortion buckling warping and uh, cracking uh, it can be reduced by pretty preheating uh, the base metal and the parts uh, which are to be welded it reduces the distortion of reducing the cooling rate and the level of thermal stresses here developed uh, uh, this technique uh, also reduces the shrinkage and possible cracking of the joint so main factor is the heating so the, uh, before starting the welding preheat the component then uh, in other types of uh, stress relieving these are pinning hammering or surface rolling of the weld bed area these techniques in uh, induce uh, compressive residual stresses which in turn it lowers or eliminate tensile residual stresses in the weld then uh, residual stresses can also be relieved by uh, uh, plastically deformation uh, of the structure by small amount then heat treatment uh, like uh, annealing, normalizing, quenching and tempering can also be done on the steels and uh, solution treatment and aging of the various alloys press pressure hardening can also be take place. Then uh, now we will discuss the weldability of the materials. Generally weldability is uh, nothing but it is the capacity to be welded in specific structure with the uh, properties which are required and the characteristics and will satisfactorily meet service requirements now the characteristics in the uh, manner the alloying elements impurities inclusion grain structure and the processing history so uh, uh, one example uh, that weldability of uh, steel decreases with the increasing carbon content because of martens thick formation that is a very hard and brittle and uh, which reduces the strength of the weld so weldability for different uh, materials uh, the capacity of uh, getting welded is different so we uh, have to consider some of the ferrous and uh, non-ferrous materials so we will discuss one by one that uh, which material is weldable and which is not so let's start uh, with ferrous material uh, first is plain carbon steel that is uh, excellent in weldability uh, if we consider low carbon steels it is uh, fair to good and uh, for medium carbon steels poor for high carbon steels 
then low carbon steels it is uh, similar to medium carbon steels then high alloy steels it is uh, generally good under well controlled conditions stainless steel uh, these generally are weldable by various processes so these are weldable cast irons are weldable although their weldability varies greatly then uh, some of the uh, weldability of non ferrous uh, materials will consider here first for aluminum alloys these are weldable at a higher rate of heat input and inert shielding gas uh, and uh, lack of moisture are important aluminum alloys containing zinc or copper generally are considerable unweldable so the composition of aluminum with zinc and copper these are unweldable then for copper alloys uh, we'll uh, discuss that depending on composition these are weldable at a high rate of uh, heat input uh, inert shielding gas and lack of moisture important for magnesium alloys uh, these are weldable with the use of protective shielding gases and uh, fluxes for nickel alloys its weldability is similar to stainless steel the lack of sulfur is undesirable so as we had discussed that stainless steels these are generally weldable by various processes then uh, here titanium alloys these are weldable with the uh, proper use of uh, shielding gases tantalum weldability is similar to that of titanium that the proper use of shielding gases should be there for tungsten weldable under well controlled conditions for molybdenum it is uh, similar to that of tungsten and tantalum niobium or columbium it, pos it possesses good weldability uh, now here we will discuss uh, some of the techniques uh, through which we check the weld joint by performing some of the uh, destructive or uh, uh, non destructive testing techniques here yeah. uh, some of the uh, organizations are uh, under which uh, many more techniques are conducted the american society for uh, testing and material the american welding society the american society of mechanical engineers the american society for civil engineers and various uh, federal agencies are there which are uh, to test the materials with their own standards so let us discuss uh, by discussing uh, destructive uh, testing techniques here first is the tension test uh, as it is very a uh, common type of uh, test to find out the tensile uh, test here so uh, uh, the test specimen is in the form here so this is uh, tested under a tensile testing machine uh, they are generally universal testing machine and uh, its uh, strengths are calculated after the fracture of the material having a huge elongation and uh, change in its cross-sectional area these are uh, calculated afterwards and along with that the uh, stress and strain curves are plotted by step by step load and displacement variation so uh, longitudinal and transverse ten tension tests are performed on uh, specimens removed from actual welded uh, joints and from the welded metal area stress strain curve is plotted here then uh, next is uh, tension shear test means in which uh, longitudinal tension uh, shear and uh, transverse uh, tension shear test are uh, performed uh, uh, these are prepared to similar uh, conditions to which actual welded joints are subjected uh, these are subjected to tension so that uh, shear strength of the weld metal and the location of the fracture can be determined next is uh, bend test there are two type of uh, testing techniques so one is uh, a wrap around the bend test and the three point uh, transverse uh, bending uh, of the welded joints 
so in this uh, testing technique specimen is bent around another type of uh, test is uh, three point uh, transverse bending of wells so here from the bottom side uh, this welded material is supported on two points and from the upper surface at one point the load is applied due to which material gets bent here and uh, in this bending uh, we just find the ductility and the strength of the welded joints so this welded uh, this bent test for welded uh, joints are very important to find out the ductility and the strength then uh, fracture toughness test uh, this test is to find out the toughness of the welded material so this is the uh, testing setup of uh, impact testing machine in, in which uh, impact test uh, specimen is uh, developed from the welded component and uh, impact testing is carried out the V notch is present in between uh, the cross section of the material to be welded is 10 by 10 by 75 each dimensions are in mm here so uh, in this uh, its structure toughness test is carried out and the uh, impact strength uh, is evaluated in this uh, setup along with that uh, uh, drop test drop weight test can also be performed to find out the toughness of the material which is welded there. then next types of uh, testing techniques are corrosion and uh, creep test uh, generally uh, the specimens uh, undergoes mechanical testing techniques welded joints also may be tested for the resistance to corrosion and creep so this is very important that along with finding uh, the mechanical strength of the material corrosion strength and creep strength can also be evaluated because uh, of the difference in the composition uh, and uh, the microstructure of the materials in the weld zone preferential corrosion may take place in the weld zone and uh, during that test the life of the material can be evaluated so we all know creep is considered uh, with uh, elevated temperature so it is uh, very important to determine the behavior of uh, welded joint and structure subjected to high temperature then uh, we'll discuss some of the important non-destructive testing techniques as we all know that uh, in which uh, mechanical properties are not evaluated and uh, mechanically the material is not destructed so uh, we just find internal flaws surface cracks internal cracks uh, some of the applications we can consider pressure vessels load bearing structural members and power plants so uh, we'll uh, have uh, some of the categories of uh, non destructive testing techniques visual inspection uh, in which uh, by our naked eyes uh, we can uh, find out the cracks if these are present on the surface and internal parts of photo section then uh, with the help of x-rays radiographic testing techniques are uh, carried out for ferrous materials uh, magnetic particle inspection setup is there uh, for finding the uh, surface cracks liquid penetrant testing is there and uh, internal flaws can be tested in uh, ultrasonic testing techniques so some of the techniques are uh, explained here first type of testing technique is uh, dye penetrant test in which the surface which is to be uh, evaluated for the presence of the crack is clean and dried and then in the next step uh, liquid penetrant is uh, applied uh, or sprayed onto the surface where cracks are to be evaluated then uh, excess amount of penetrant is uh, washed uh, from the surface uh, but uh, not the defect here then after that process uh, developer or developing agent is applied onto the surface uh, over which already water wash is carried out from the 
liquid penetrant surface and then after last is inspection uh, if there is any kind of uh, defect present on to the surface uh, the dark spots are developed that means the discontinuity is revealed so this is one of the very uh, easy technique to find out the surface crack so next type of uh, testing technique we'll discuss uh, magnetic uh, particle inspection uh, generally uh, those materials which are ferrous uh, these are considered for evaluating the surface as well as subsurface cracks and the cracks may be uh, in the form of a transverse or longitudinal type here so uh, magnetic field is developed when magnetizing current is supplied through the materials so uh, generally what happens the direction of the magnetic field which is perpendicular to the presence of the cracks if these cracks are present and these come across on the way to the magnetic field these are highlighted onto the workpiece so this is a very important technique uh, based on uh, the type of crack present on the onto the surface uh, in that manner magnetic field may be uh, developed in longitudinal or transverse manner so uh, next type of uh, testing technique is uh, radiographic uh, test in which uh, source of uh, x-ray is uh, produced by using uh, some of the radioactive uh, materials this is uh, carried out in very controlled environment away from the uh, away from the contact of the human bodies because it is very harmful so uh, the work piece which is uh, welded and we need to find out uh, the cracks on the surface or uh, inside the uh, material that is kept uh, in between the source of uh, x-ray and the film the film is it produces the image uh, if any crack is present inside the material itself then x-ray is uh, supplied and uh, material the welded material comes in between x-ray source and the film and this film gives us the indication if the presence of crack is in the material so these are some of the basic techniques in which internal flaws uh, surface cracks subsurface cracks can be evaluated so uh, thank you so much uh, in next lecture we will uh, discuss uh, some of the different types of uh, welding techniques like brazing and soldering thank you thank you so much